As a maker, I work predominantly with clay, and um, I mean it's hard giving yourself a title when you when you work with the material in different ways. But the way I describe it is sculptural ceramics. I went to college at Blackburn and. Um, where I did a BTEC National Diploma in Art and Design, and which was followed then by uh, a degree at Preston University. After my degree, I did my MA just so that I could continue and develop the process that I had formed in my degree. And um, I actually became self-employed 2004. A lot of my design is based around repeat pattern, um, which is uh, created within a circle kind of repeats itself throughout all the work I've done over the years and um, and the repeat pattern is um, created within the circle by dissecting it. I can do up to about 100, 150 designs and out of that choose 10 to 15. I might do a whole spread of my design book with symmetry of three and the next one might be symmetry of eight and um, you can't expect a wonderful design just to come to you just like that. You have to put down as many interpretations of uh, thoughts in your head onto the paper and then hopefully you end up with a few good ones. <laughs> I'm using quite a range of clays, a lot of them I haven't used before so the results I don't know 100% what the results going to be but it's uh, clays from different parts of the world um, but I've got a lot of European countries and I've got some clay from Israel and Pakistan I've got some uh, clay uh, which uh, raw ingredients are being dug up from Mississippi River. I mean, I've got a great association with clay and I love the material. I love the fact that it's dug out from the ground. It's, I love the fact that, you know, we are made from clay and that we all end up as clay after we die. Um, so that's always been my association. But then with this whole um, issue about identity um, and um, saying where we come from and um, where we truly come from, um, was more of an issue. I think going to Pakistan uh, at the beginning of last year kind of brought lots of issues to my mind as well with um, in regards to identity of um, in England people say you know um, foreigners you know um, and then when you go to um, Pakistan um, I was actually born there so I thought you know I'd be more accepted but in the universities that I was doing uh, where I was doing the residency at they would always introduce me as, um, this is a foreigner from England. The whole thing about identity is, can you actually really say where you're from? And the idea of using lots of different clays from different places was this idea that we're all made from the same material, but different colour and texture, and, and a lot of the clays that I'm working will be evident of that. So I always used about a deer in clay and then handle it as little as possible as I'm actually shaping it into the former, which then is sometimes built up with coils. And the thickness is varying depending on the design. I spend quite a while, maybe a day and a half to two days building the shape, making it as perfect as possible. And if, if the shape is perfect, the better result you have with when you're mapping your design and measurements on, around it. When the piece is actually carved into, There'll only be minor high points on the overall piece that will actually show. The reason for getting it so perfect is just to give you confidence before you start putting the design on onto it and carving into it, knowing that it's all perfect. The third process would be actually working the maths for the surface uh, area of the form to fit the, design, the chosen design for that particular piece. When you look inside the bowl, um, you can see all the mapping out. It's not only just got the design, it's got lots of measurements and uh, what I call construction lines. Once I've got that map perfectly, I can start with the st stage which I enjoy the most, which is the carving. And the whole piece is actually done by hand. Um, and by using the process of um, working on the same shape, um, before moving on to the next shape, kind of gives you uh, the feel that, that it's done with some measuring tool. But um, for instance, if you're working with a circle at the top, you know, you can feel the depth of it as you're working in it. So when you move on to the next one, you know the depth of that one, you kind of get an intuition kind of feeling.
the process is very labour intensive and um, time it takes to do an individual piece um, can vary uh, depending on the complexity or the finish of the piece uh, from 80 hours plus uh, for each piece. I actually carve with both hands so it helps um, get to um, the different angles that I need to get to. Um, when you're carving opposites it's sometimes hard to bend um, your normal hand, hand that you use which is my left hand um, so I learned to carve with both hands just to make the process easier. When you're working with pattern it kind of brings in lots of different cultures even though my main inspirations are um, architecture and Islamic um, art and, and uh, African surface design and um, I think when the general um, public look at the work, it takes them to different places and I think that's the power of pattern, I think. People will say it looks quite a, a North American or um, Aboriginal or it takes them back to a, a different place or a completely different place than where I might have thought it might have come from. Um, but um, I, I think that's the whole beauty about pattern, it takes people to different places and, and I think Pattern is one of the links we've got, what actually brings us all together as well. So at this stage I'm actually just paring away, getting the angles and the curvatures of the overall design. This piece um, is a less coarser clay, um, but uh, still um, has got a lovely texture in the clay. Um, if the clay hasn't got any, hasn't got much texture then it's better to burnish the whole piece, which Again, it takes a lot of time, but um, you have to do it just so then it gives some kind of substance to the piece. Once the piece is carved, the drying process and the firing process are very important processes in that they um, um, need a lot of time. This is where I fire all the work. It's the biggest kiln you can have what works off a normal electricity, electricity phase from a house. and. Um, the work is put in here on um, sand so that when it's sh uh, firing and shrinking that it doesn't put any pressure on all the sharp points, delicate points of the piece and uh, the firing can take to reach up to temperature about four days and then cooling can take another two, two and a half days. The reason why I put so much time and dedication to the work I do is because I love it and the pleasure it gives when you actually carve something you see it from a drawing stage to something where it becomes real and tangible and the excitement of that process from a flat design to something 3D and very tactile is a really exciting process uh, to go through mentally as well as physically when creating the piece. <laughs>